Three years ago, in March 2015, I was on my way home from a skiing trip with a group of friends from college. And I'm flipping through my phone, and an email pops up. And it's one of those emails that you typically delete immediately. It's from a woman who I barely know, asking if I might be able to help rescue a friend of hers whose life was in danger in Yemen, who'd been receiving death threats. And my first thought was, this is ridiculous. What the heck can I do to help some guy in Yemen? I live in San Francisco. And so I was about to delete that email, but I paused. There were two things. The first was that I was in the middle of reading a book about the Holocaust, about people who'd had an opportunity to save a life and change the course of history, but who didn't. And as a young Jewish leader, I didn't want to be one of those people to say no to a life in danger. And the second thing was that I knew one guy in Yemen, Muhammad, an inspirational Muslim peace activist who'd been doing work to bring Muslims and Jews together. I'd met him just a few weeks earlier, and I still had his business card in my wallet. So I responded to this email. I said, listen, I don't think I can help your friend, but I do know this incredible peace activist, Muhammad. Here's his contact information. Maybe Muhammad can help your friend. And I felt like I had done my civic duty. I felt good about myself. I felt like I had done enough until I received an email just a few hours later. It is Muhammad. That's whose life's in danger. And from that moment on, I would barely sleep. I would spend every waking minute on the phone, on Skype, on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, trying to connect with people in governments, militaries, and NGOs around the world who could help. I was coordinating with three of Muhammad's friends, other millennials, young people like me, who I'd never met before in my life, Daniel in New York, Megan and Natasha in Tel Aviv. The four of us had no idea what we were doing. We were scared. Every call with Muhammad felt like it could be his last. You could hear bombs falling in the background. Military experts told us what we were trying to do was impossible, but we wouldn't give up until we saved Muhammad because of the incredible life that Muhammad al-Samawi has lived. Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm really happy to be here today with you. Um, yeah, I, I was raised in Yemen. And unfortunately, I, I thought that Jews hate us, and Jews, they want to kill us, and they hate Muslims. And I was believing in that. I was believing that Jews, they don't like Muslims, and they don't like Yemenis. Until when I was 23 years old, I met this Christian teacher in Yemen. He was from England, working in Yemen. And I thought that I will convert him to be Muslim, so I gave him the Quran, the Holy Book of Muslims. And he gave me the Bible. So it was my first time to read the Christian Bible. But I didn't know that the Christian Bible has Old Testament, New Testament. I didn't know that if I start reading the Bible from the beginning, I will actually read in the Torah. And when I started reading the Torah, I saw how much it's an amazing book. I saw how much it's similarity with the Quran, the Holy Book of Muslims. But I was always asking myself, if Jews have such an amazing book, why do they hate us? Why do they want to kill us? So what I did, I started trying to search for Jews. And I found something called Facebook. So I thought that through Facebook I can meet Jews. So <laughs> the first thing I did is I added hot girls from Israel as friends. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you can imagine nobody actually accepted my request. But in any way, I was keeping doing and searching about why we hate each other. And it became more part of peace building activities on Facebook. And one day that I decided that I want to meet the first Jew in my life. So I opened Google and I thought that I would find a conference where I can meet a Jew. And I found a conference actually in Bosnia. This was in, 2000, in 2012, 13. And I traveled to Bosnia 
and I met the first Jew in my life, but he wasn't only a Jew. He was Jew, gay, and Israeli, like three in one for me. And um, at that moment, at that moment, I stayed in Bosnia for five days, and it changed my life. I came back to Yemen, I started telling my friends about it, and I tried to do activities in ground in Yemen between Jews and Muslims. Unfortunately, extreme groups, they didn't like what I do, so they're trying to kill me. I escaped from them, and I escaped from my city, and I went to the south of Yemen, to another city, trying to escape from them. But unfortunately, I went to the wrong place in the wrong time because the city where I were, it was a civil war. And I was surrounded by that. I was surrounded by extreme groups. And I didn't know what to do. I tried to reach everyone. I tried to reach my family, my friends. Nobody was able to help me out. So what I did, I used social media. I used Facebook, and I asked everyone if anyone can help me out. And as Justin said, Justin, Megan, Natasha, and Daniel, the four of them, they didn't know each other. They worked as one team to help me out this cave. And in a matter of 13 days, I was able actually to be rescued. And I, it's funny because uh, when they helped me out, when they helped me out to be evacuated, I've been evacuated on Passover of 2015. And I actually crossed the Red Sea uh, in the wrong direction, I crossed it from Yemen to Africa, to Djibouti. Um, and when I was in Djibouti, I received this kind of amazing support from all these Jewish organizations, including the American Jewish Committee and Moshe House and other organizations who gave me invitations to come to the United States. And then I came to the United States and I started telling the story. And I just finished writing my book. It's called The Fox Hunt. Um, Go see it. It's, uh, it will be published in, on April. And um, the book was uh, adopted by Fox Studios. So also it will be a movie. Um, hopefully you will see it also soon. <laughs> and um, I'm part also of ML, uh, who is trying to build bridge between Muslims and Jews and also creating a next generation, so hopefully you can be part also of Amel, Google about it, and yeah. And so what you've just heard is just a snippet of an incredible story, and it's just a snippet of what can happen when you say yes. What allowed Megan, Daniel, Natasha, Muhammad, and I to do what military experts told us was impossible was one simple thing. We said, Hineni. We said, here I am. And when you say yes, when you open yourself up to the possibilities, miracles can happen. Thank you guys so much.